So the 700, so the 700 gallon aquarium is now ready for fish. So the 700 gallon aquarium is now ready for fish. I gotta start cleaning my glass more often. Fritz sent me all this stuff and you know, I, 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 I'm always about to make a video and I never clean my glass and you guys always get after me. So I try to keep that cl close by as a reminder that you guys actually wanna see into the aquariums. This is a 700 gallon aquarium. It's eight feet long, it's five feet front to back and it's a little over two and a half feet tall, making it 700 gallons. You'll remember that we had these logs the trees, trunks growing completely out of the aquarium itself. And when we originally planted this, the plant certainly didn't look like this. I did originally have an algae bloom. All, uh, all it was was, uh, you know, some, some hair algae and whatnot. I manually removed it, did a big water change and it never came back. The tank is cloudy right now. That's simply because there's a lot of uh, filtration mulm in the tank and circulating throughout it because I did hook this up uh, with cycled media. Um, we'll talk about the front of it first. There's a couple of MP60s on this tank. These guys flow like 3,000 gallons per hour or so. I, I of course don't uh, run them at 100%, but if we look at the way it's set up, we can't even see to the other end of the tank, but there's one here focusing on the front of the tank, more so the bottom section, and then one here focusing on uh, the top area in the top section, which is helping blow away the return of the filter that is coming out of the back of the tree trunk. There's a pump in that tree trunk that comes out on the other side where my uh, utility room is, or basically it's the quarantine room now, and it pumps into this large canister that was filled with cycled biological media. This filter is then returned to the tank and exits right here. Now, obviously this is an eyesore, but I've been testing, uh, look at the snails in here. It, they were The snails were in the media and there's nothing I could do, but we're gonna have some fish that'll likely eat them but it just returns to the tank here. And I'm adjusting it, putting it up and down, twisting it, that sort of thing to figure out where I want the flow that doesn't rip up the plants or disturb the fish or anything before I come up with the final solution. However, right now, I don't really care because you can't even see it when you're looking at the tank. Now that pump is pumping through the filter at about 3000 gallons per hour, which essentially means I'm only getting a turn rate, turnover rate of about four times an hour in this aquarium. And when it comes to canister filters, I typically shoot to uh, four to six times an hour anyway. So it's on the low end, but that's not going to be a big issue. We have tons of surface area in the sand, as well as all the decorations that bacteria is gonna grow on. You have to remember that bacteria is uh, an organism that lives on a surface. It doesn't live in free, uh, free flowing water. Uh, it does need a surface to survive on. Not a lot to update here. The lights come on in the morning, go off at night. Uh, I'm currently running them at around seven hours a day, uh, which seems to be ultimate, ultim ultimate, <laughs> ultim uh, optimal, optimal. <laughs> and when it comes to dosing, I do add a little bit of iron here and there because my water source is void of it. Um, now that I've hooked up the filter, I don't need to dose it with much of anything else. Uh, the nitrogen cycle has been uh, working on this tank. Not only is this filter media cycled, but I cleaned all the filters from all of the 180s, you know, took the sponges out of the filters, squeezed them into a bucket of water and dumped it in here to help feed and seed the cycle before fish get in here. Because worst case scenario is you put a fully cycled, aquari uh, fully cycled filter on an aquarium and you put it in a water that's completely bare of any nutrients like the tap water or whatever type of water you add. It doesn't have ammonia in it immediately. Uh, and that bacteria could potentially die off causing a mini cycle, a bacterial bloom, a, a tremendous amount of issues. So we'll deal with cloudy water. It may look bad, but it's incredibly healthy and exactly what I need to happen. Now, when it comes to the stocking of that aquarium, we once talked about the fact that we were going to do uh, maybe a couple hundred Congo Tetras. And I thought that would be absolutely amazing. But the longer I thought about it and the longer I dragged my butt on setting that tank up and just making sure the plants rooted properly, the more I realized is that would only kind of be cool for a few weeks or a few couple months before we just like, it's boring to kind of look at. It would be kind of different, but why can't we add a, you know, a couple hundred true schooling tetras and then have a main feature fish in a 700 gallon planted aquarium that you typically wouldn't guess. And the best part is we already have them. They're incredibly healthy and they would do probably do a lot more better in a larger aquarium. All fish do, don't they? I'm talking the Piranha Aquarium. I propose we move all 15 or 20, however, however many's in here, 
over to the 700 and then add in a couple of hundred tetras that are true schooling where the Prana won't harm them. All of these guys are, uh, you know, four inches plus at this point. They might not look like it because, well, this tank is such a dark tannin water tank. All that uh, manzanita in it still leaches, you know, no matter how much I do my water changes. But this tank, while we're here, we might as well do an update on it. Uh, so this tank here is 180 gallons. It's six feet long, two feet wide, two feet tall. Once again, we're using those pendant style lights that I showed you how to make. Uh, they are upside down flower pots with a hole screwed in the uh, bottom and then installed some basic LED lights. And that was it. Painted them black and hung them up and set them on go. Filtration is built right into the tank. Using the same material that I use to build my lids, I created an in aquarium sump. Water's gonna flow over and go through this grating system. This is its overflow. It goes through all of this sponge, which acts as mechanical as well as biological, goes through these holes here, comes up through this grating, which is elevating all of this biological media. Look at all the mum just sitting on it. I don't even touch it. I let this happen. I let the organisms live out and microorganisms live out their life in here. And then it overflows to the final chamber where it's returned by an aquarium pump that's pumping around 3000 gallons per hour. So this tank is incredibly clear, uh, at least in person, but because there's so many tannins, it looks like there's a bunch of a tea spilt in it. Uh, however, I like it. I like the glistening of the lights. I, I think it looks absolutely amazing. Um, and I've been wanting to kind of do, oh, I kind of want to do a massive planted piranha aquarium. I think it would just be absolutely phenomenal to walk in on. And the first thing you see, well, let me explain. Oh, first, look at these guys. The Anubius is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and overtaking everything. But this is such a beautiful tank that I don't want to rip it down. I think it looks awesome. I do have some fish that could go in this and I'm thinking festivums and angelfish and making an Amazonian style tank. Maybe toss in some apistos as well as maybe a few tetras and call it a day. I think it would look absolutely phenomenal. But back to the story. We walk in the front. I'm so unorganized. We walk in the front door and we're first greeted by this massive aquarium that almost acts like a, a, a visual block to the rest of the gallery before you kind of look left. Um, I do like these leaves and, and trees being here. There's some here and there's some on the other side. I love it. Uh, with that said, we walk in and likely we'll get a schooling fish that stays near the top. And that's like the first thing you might see is that schooling fish. You look down and you see like 20 large piranha in a massive aquarium, in a planted tank, you look up. And you can see that the trees are coming through <laughs> the top of the aquarium. Just absolutely such a crazy idea that I've been thinking about for a while. And it's a huge reason why I've been dragging my butt on this tank. I know I said I wanted to do Congo Tetras. I knew that you guys would love that idea, like three, four, five hundred of them. I think that that would be kind of cool at first. Here's the thing. Once you see this video, the piranha will already be in that tank and will likely have already ordered the tetras. Uh, <laughs> so even if you don't want this to happen, like I said, the minute you click play, it's already have happened. I want to kind of show you guys this in, in, in advance and make sure the tank is cycled and the fish are doing okay. And if this video went up, fish were moved properly, everything went well, and they're doing fantastic. I'll film that as well for you guys. So if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do so you don't miss that video. But if you can't wait for all of this and you want to see it in advance or behind the scenes, consider joining the channel. Check out the, the join button. I believe it's underneath this video to the right. I don't know what it looks like on mobile. And check out the perks that you get by joining uh, and make a decision of whether you want that or not. No pressure, uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> That's it. I gotta go. This is, uh, this is exciting. This is so fun, guys, and thanks for joining me on this journey. Joking. Just wanted to get rid of the people that don't really stick around to the end. So if we free up the Piranha Aquarium and we free up the fish that are in here, which is the fish I was talking about, and we combine the tanks that we were talking about previously, we now have a free 180 up there that we're thinking goldfish, but what do you think I'm going to do in here? Clue. We also did this before and I swore them off for the remainder of everything. I said I would never do this again. Total bad taste in my mouth. We'll see what happens though. I don't want to get my hopes up because it's an opportunity that might go away sooner than I need it to. But uh, just 
I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>